got hit, you get been in the balance car. You was getting hit in college just because you were gifted. I remember when we took over making medical center. When you had that that that, that uh, aneurysm, when the fraternity took the whole uh, Mr. Hicks, my, my other dad, Mr. Hicks told the people, y'all just leave him alone because they're going to be in here until he get, he get out of here. Just let him give him a room. And they gave us a room in the hospital. Amen. So we weren't going nowhere. Amen. Well, this man was in, 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 in urgent care. Right. And he was there for a while. It was dicey. So you know a little something, something about a fight. You know something, something about and it started when you was in the womb. All right. Oh, I knew my story. Come on now. It started when he was swimming inside of his mother. That the enemy conspired against him. Don't you know? Don't you know? I'm talking to you. Don't you know that if you come against somebody who beat the hell out of the devil while he was an embryo? While he was inside his mama, he was tearing up the blood of the devil. Don't you know he's somebody to follow? If he was my pastor, I'm like, yes, sir, pastor. Wherever I was going, I'm going. Wherever you be, I'll be. Your God will be my God. Your people are going to be my people. Because the word of the Lord rolls through him. Rolls through him. I'm telling you what I know. I ain't talking about what I heard. I, 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 I know that the enemy is going to conspire. And the enemy has conspired against Charles Hicks for a long, long time. And now here we are on the 21st anniversary as your pastor. Hallelujah. You know, he, he don't want all that appreciation stuff. I don't care. I'm going to get it to him because here's the deal. God has brought him here only because he came into agreement with God. All right, all right. I was preaching a uh, fire revival in Trinidad for Noah Jones. I'm not name dropping. It just happened by God's grace. I don't even really know the man. But <laughs> he invited me to preach. He got hold of one of them good tapes. <laughs> So there I was in Trinidad, and it was a sea of people, more people in this country apart from Ailey, Georgia, down there 10 miles from Valle. The, the most people I ever seen in an assembly anywhere. And I'm preaching for Noah Jones, and I'm hanging out, and I'm having dinner with him. And, and I would say what I hear my friend Charles say all the time, to God be the glory. Because that's what we good religious people are taught. And he was like, you know, let me tell you something, preacher. I know what you're doing. I know what great works you're doing. I know what God is doing through you. And ain't nothing small about that. He said, let me help you out. God does nothing in the earth realm without your agreement. He said, you are the body of Christ. You carry out the orders. You make things happen. You say God sends miracles, but you the one got to put your hands on it. You are participating with the glory of God. Ain't scared of you taking his glory from him. It's God's glory, but get this. You are the hope of God's glory. Oh, yes. Christ in you yes. is the hope of God's glory. Yes. He said, the real deal, Lucille, you are the one God uses in the earth realm. Yes. And if you volunteer this earthly vessel for heavenly treasures, you can expect adversaries to come with yes. 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 They threw him in the pit. I don't care how anointed you are, how great you are, how much your daddy and them know, how much favor you have on your life. At some time, you're going into the pit. You're going into a financial pit, a pit of sickness, a divorce pit, a depression pit, betrayal. The, the, the important thing is to know that the pit is not permanent. Yes. The pit yes. is not your yes. Don't unpack your bags and set up pictures while you're in the pit. Uh -oh. Don't take off your shoes and get comfortable in the pit. That's it, uh, don't, don't fall with your mail to the pit. That's it, baby. 
time you are destined for the palace. Don't pitch your tent in, in the, the pit. pit. Yes. They threw Joseph in the pit and it was empty. Yes. There was no water in that pit. Oh empty. Look at your neighbor and say empty. 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 Come on, Bishop. No water. No Kool-Aid, red, <laughs> nothing to quench the thirst, nothing physical, tangible evidence right. of better days to come. Water is the most basic necessity. It's a necessary element required to sustain life after three days without it. You start going down. You got to understand this. So uh, this tells us that Joseph was in a very dark place, meaning that there was no, not a single ray of light to speak of, uh, of deliverance. There was no uh, single ray of victory over the pit. After all, he was an unskilled, crony, unworking baby boy anyway. He had no skills in building ladders. He didn't know what to do because if the pit had been filled with water, God knows he would have drowned. Right. And the fact that there was no water in the pit meant that Joseph would not drown even though uh, he was thirsty. Yes, right. and he wouldn't drown. Amen. And that sounds like a small consolation, but when you're it's independent, true. you learn how to find hope and encouragement yes. in the smallest things. Yes. Because uh, before the pit, uh, I needed a nice house. I'm just saying, yes. before my pit, I wanted to live large and I buy it a uh, I like to buy stuff that costs a, a, a lot of money before the pit, you know. Uh, I, I had to have the finer things of light. I, I had to drive a, a nice car, you know. Uh, you know, I had to make sure my wife was doing the right, the same thing and that she was driving right because we had to represent uh, a life that was uh, our fabulous and, and all of that, but the real deal, Lucille is at the, the the pit changes all these days. Yes. Before the pit, I had a position in church. I had a name tag. And I had my own parking space. Ah, before the pit, I needed money. I had money in the bank and, and a good retirement and and money in my wallet to make me happy. Uh, before the pit, uh, my praise was weak and sporadic, and, and I didn't even really like to praise God, because like my good old Methodist mama, it just don't take all that. <laughs> but that was before the pit. Amen. There's something about the pit yes. Yes. that calls you to look up. Amen. <laughs> and, and to be thankful for the little thing. Yeah. So today, Joseph said, I just be thankful that there ain't no water in the pit. In the pit. All right. Amen. I'm thirsty. Okay. Self-abuse a drink. Okay. <laughs> but thank but you. But I'm thankful. Yes. Yes, it hurts. Yes. And, and, and when I hit the bottom, didn't and that didn't good. feel good. No, it didn't. But I just gonna praise God right now. Hallelujah. I'm just gonna give God some glory. Yes. That my pit is empty. All right. uh, I did not drown in the pit. I know somebody, I'm in your Kool-Aid. I already got your flavor because somebody I'm talking to you right now know that you've been murmuring and grumbling and complaining about all the things you ain't got. Running down your list on why you have a, 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 a right to be hurt after what he did to you. You have a right to be angry, a right to feel sorry for yourself. And some of you have had the nerve to tell God he hasn't done anything for you worthy of his praise. Well, now, what you need to do, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, is shut up. Uh, <laughs> shut up, you're mumbling and you're grumbling and you're complaining and you need to start praising God that your pit yes. is empty. Yes. All right. You didn't drink. Yes. You, you're still here. You're not dead. You still got a fighting chance. Yeah, praise God 
if you still have eyes and you have ears to hear. Yeah. You yeah. praise him because you, your heart is still beating and your blood is still running warm yeah. in your veins. Praise him because you didn't die yeah. when you hit the bottom. Praise him because he woke you up this morning and he started you on your way. This is not... Glory to God. This is not a lot of people. Uh, Dr. Hicks and his family are in the funeral home business, as you well know. Well, I guarantee you that they got some bodies in those places right now. Some folks didn't make it past last night. Amen. That's right. And if you are in this place in here today, you ought to give God praise. Hallelujah. Because you ain't no other school in the right about now. There's a lot of people that didn't wake up this morning. There's a lot of people that did not see this day. Praise God. Thank you, God. Even if your pit is empty. Causes you to feel this present. I want to stay right here for a minute because you can take my car. Uh, you can take my house. You can take my money. Uh, you can take from me all the comforts and the conveniences of this life. You can even strip me of my clothes and the shoes I wear. But you can't take his presence from God. You can't take it from me. Uh, you can't take it from me. Uh, you, gotta, you, you can put me in the pit. And I'm making my prayer closet. You can put me on. I'm still anointed. I need you to prophesy to yourself. Look up in the sky and say, I'm still anointed. Put me in the lion's den, in the fiery furnace. I'm still anointed. Some of you need to lift up your head and shout, I'm still anointed. I may be going to hell. Situations, but I'm still anointed. I lost my job, but I'm still anointed. Sickness has attached itself to my body, but I'm still anointed. Does anybody know that you're anointed? You need to give God some praise. You may be in a tight place right now. You might be at the end of it, but you're still anointed. You have been in a dark place right about now. You hear the word of the Lord saying that you're still anointed. Yes. Your heart, Thank you, God. Your heart may be breaking right now. Yes. But you're anointed. Thank yes. you, God. The, the devil's intention, bless his dumb heart, was that you would die yes. in the pit. Yes. He thought that he pushed you to your death. But what I want you to know is that all he did was push you into your anointing. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. You don't get to anointing unless you come through something. All right, man. The, the uh, anointing increases under pressure. Have you learned that? Have you learned that? Your anointing increases under pressure. The anointing is, is released by the crushing of the olives or the fragrances or the myrrh. So when Satan's to crush you is actually releasing the anointing in your life. Hallelujah. He didn't know it because he's an idiot. He's not omniscient. He don't know what he's doing. He's just doing it because he's a statistician. He's a strategist. But he don't know the future. He don't know the outcome. Oh, I'm teaching you something right here. My marriage might come under attack. My character might be assassinated. My, my kids might be on drugs, but you know what? None of that stops you from being anointed. Hallelujah! Don't let no church folk tell you just cause your child crazy that you are not anointed. You keep praying for that crazy child because the real deal, Lucille, you was a crazy child too. And he got it from me. Hallelujah! Teach, Bishop, teach. I'm just talking about me. I'm just saying. I recognize. <laughs> Even in the pit, I can feel his presence. Amen. 
And if I can feel his presence, I know I'm going to make it. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. Amen. So instead of sitting here in the ash heaps uh-huh. of disappointment and self-pity, God, how are we going to pay for all of this? <laughs> Ain't doing Moaning and groaning and complaining. I'm going to get to a garment of praise in a minute. Right yes. With the spirit of heaviness. Yes. Because see, right here in the pit, I'm, I'm going to give that dude his name. I'm going to give him a palace praise. All right. I may be in the pit, but there's a palace anointing inside. So, so right here in this mess, right here in this pain, right here in this dark, hard place, I'm gonna get my praise on. Amen. Folk, folk, my aunt up in Detroit asked me why I started praising God. You, you know how we Methodists do it. I'm going to talk to you because you understand. Because you just started praising God like them sanctified people. <laughs> I said, uh-huh, that's right. Because uh, when I was uh, in that crack house, right. Tell you. God came and got me out yeah. of there. Right, right. yes, yes, yes. When I was laying flat on my back, chemotherapy, Coursing my veins and brain. God delivered me. You gonna ask me why I praise God? Like I can lose my cut picking my cause I can lose my cut picking my God got me. God has kept me. And God keep on keeping me. Don't look at me while I shout. You better shout for yourself. You better Shout! Yes. yes! I hope I shot you off my pew! Oh. I know, I know my testimony. Yes. And ain't shame of it. That's right. I'm over that. That's gone. And you can't give your testimony because you still in it. I'm just saying. So I stopped by to tell somebody over here at New Allen Temple, AME Church, on the main highway, outside Byron Head towards Mo Valley. I came to tell somebody that you're not going to die in that pit. God told me to tell you it's just a temporary inconvenience. He, God told me to tell you, you're bigger than your pit. Yes. He told me to check your recent history out of temple, and you ought to know that by now. Uh-huh. Your dream is bigger than the pit. Your anointing is bigger than the pit. Your destiny is bigger than the pit. What God is looking for from you and for me is a palace praise from inside the center of the pit. Don't wait until that don't wait until everything looks good. Don't wait until something starts to feel good. You can't wait uh, until you get in the palace. Because the baby bubble, your praise is your entry into the palace. Yes, 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 yes. And you praise God right now. You're bigger than your pit. You're bigger than your pit. You gotta give them a palace praise from the pit. Because right there, where the devil said it was gonna end, right there is, is that hard place. Right there is that dark place. It's that broken place. It's a place of loneliness and isolation. It's that place where you you can't see anything good happening. But right there in that place. Woo, I'm going home now. I'm getting ready to go. Right there in that place. You put on your garment of praise. David, 
uh, Jojo had had a picture for dressing good. And he realized that his daddy had given him a garment. And so in that bit, he had a Holy Ghost premonition of the future garments God was going to set him up with. And he put on his garment of praise while sitting there in that pit because he knew he had to come back yeah. the spirit of heaviness. So right there, right there in that place, uh, when you, you cried yourself to sleep, uh, at that place where you feel like the life is being squeezed out of you. Yes. Right there, right there in that hard place, in that dark place, right there in the pit. I need you to give God a palace. Hallelujah, praise. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, God. Start, yes, yes. yes. Look at what someone who loves him. Yes, no thank you, God. What, thank you, God. No matter what you're dealing with, yeah. no matter what you're going through, can you give him some praise? Hallelujah. Uh -huh. yeah. God is looking for folks who are ready to run in the furnace because you know God going to be there right You're on your way from the pit yes. to the palace. Yes. Yes. And, and your praise. Yes. I need you to hear me. Yes. Yeah, let, 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 me, let me tell you this. I prophesy to whoever you are. You're on your way to your palace. I receive it. Thank it don't you. feel like it. Yes. Yes. It don't look God. like it. Thank you, God. There's <coughs> hell house at your door. Mm -hmm. But God told me to tell you today. You're on your way to the palace. Thank you, God. Yes. Yes. I, I know you. I can God, see you don't God. believe me. Let's stir this up. Stir this up. Touch three people. Sir. Touch three people to tell you you're on your way. I'm on my way. You're on your way. I'm on my way. You head to the palace. I'm on way. I'm on way. I'm on way. There's prophecy in your praise. Tell me there's prophecy in your praise. If you want to know where I'm going, listen to my praise. If you want to know what I'm going to get with, right. listen to my praise. Yes. If you want to know what's coming next in my life, listen to my praise. Yes. Genesis 41 and 14 said that Pharaoh sent and he called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. Watch this. And, his, and, and he, he shaved himself and he changed his raiments. And, 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 and he came unto Pharaoh. My my praise, watch this. My praise is for prophetic. I said, I said prophetic. I, I, I didn't say pathetic. All right, now. <laughs> My praise is prophetic. Amen. I, I, I don't want to sound too harsh or uncaring, but to tell you the truth, many times our praise really is pathetic uh -huh. and sickly uh -huh. and half hearted and insincere and limp wristed yeah. and sloppy. Yeah. But. But that was all before the pit. Uh, now my praise is the real deal. My praise is the guard of the trappings of carrying what you think. Amen. I'm healthier now. Amen. I, I don't need your love if your love don't come with the coffee. Amen. All right, all right. I, 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 I don't need you to co-sign where I am because the real deal is I am where I am because God is where he is. You, you need to understand that no prison can hold you down. And, and this sickness can't hold you down. And this bondage can't can't hold you down. That this habit uh, can't hold you down. I I got a real praise in my belly. Yes. Yes. And when Joseph Clay changed his clothes, he was he was still in prison. In other words, he looked crazy. He he, he looked out a place. He's all dressed up, standing in prison, and and and, and it don't make sense. He was in prison, but he had on his palace garments. All right, all right. He was in the middle of the prison, but he knew he was headed out to the palace. And so he dressed up 
Uh, in his garment of praise, right. he had a palace clothes while in prison. So some of the other prisoners probably started joking at him and making fun at him because, you know, he's, he's accustomed to that. And they probably said, Johnny, no, no, your brothers are right. You is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Who you think you are? But Joseph's clothes were prophesying. I, I, I may be in prison. Amen. Uh, but tomorrow I'm going to be in the Amen. Palace. God said to tell you how to tell that somebody today, if you just give God a crazy praise, if you give God a crazy praise that just don't make sense, if you praise God like you done lost your mind, if you praise it like you already in the palace, you'll see the glory of God. You'll see the spirit of death from it. You'll see salvation come to your house. You'll see cancer dry up and die. You'll see the walls fall down. You'll see restoration and reconciliation and healing. And you will be delivered. Somebody, you just need to stand right here today. Recognizing that you're in the pit, but lift up your hands over your gates and be lifted up yes. your hands. Yes. And the King of Glory shall come in. Yes. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord, mighty in battle. Give God a praise. Give Him a praise from the pit.